Welcome back to the Intrepid Dawn News Network. I'm Tim Katarn, broadcasting from Intrepid Dawn Studios on Earth. As always, we bring you the top stories from around the UEC. We interrupt this regularly scheduled programming for an announcement from UEC President Nathan Samuels. Citizens of Earth, five years ago the human race was nearly wiped out by a sequence of events that no one will ever forget. Our fate was forever altered by the strong alliance of three separate races working in harmony for mutual benefit. Today, the only reason we are standing here is because of that alliance. That alliance forged years ago by our fathers and hopefully for many years to come. I believe it is time to take that next step in our journey and form a united federation of planets with one government and no borders. We owe our existence to this alliance, and through strength and unity, we can overcome all future threats. The galaxy can be a hostile place, but together, we will endure. I have formally taken the step to invite our allies into this federation. Today at a conference at Pijem, both Administrator Velas of Vulcan and Sarad of Andoria have ratified the constitution to create a federation that will endure forever. Today is the day our many races are joined together in peace, and in the spirit of exploration and progress. Today marks the birth of the Federation, the United Federation of Planets. This is an exciting moment. Details are still coming in on how the new government will be organized. We are told that as the Catalyst Nation, it has been decided that Earth will be the seat of power for the Federation, and all species will continue to be free to migrate between planets as desired. Additionally, a formal federation council will meet bi-yearly to discuss issues and recommend diplomatic endeavors including inviting new member states. Over time, the goal is to unite the races of the Alpha and Beta Quadrant to deal with threats faced by aggressive xenophobes such as the Romulan Star Empire. Based in San Francisco, Starfleet will continue to be the primary paramilitary organization that is responsible for peaceful exploration and planetary defense. With the increased budget possible through this federation partnership, Starfleet has announced plans to expand its reach into the Unknown Systems. Additionally, Starfleet Academy is now recruiting to prepare for this expansion. Interested parties should vote in the comments to become eligible to enlist. Finally, we are told of the creation of the Federation Security Council that will help ensure peace and safety of the member worlds. Viewers that interact in the comments will earn a seat on this council and help to shape Federation policy for days and weeks to come. Make your voice heard and become a counselor today. So what does the future hold for this new United Federation of Planets? Thank you for watching, I'm Tim Katarn, we'll see you in the verse. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Intrepid Dawn, my name is Captain Katarn, and today we're going to be playing Star Trek number 5. Uh, you watch the opening cinematic leading into this, so we have created the United Federation of Planets. Very exciting. If you're new to the channel, this is the kind of thing that we do where we have cinematic storylines that interact with our gameplay. Something to get you guys involved with it. You can vote on our actions weekly and also interact with us in the comments in order to earn a place in the game. And your character would carry over into future episodes, should they survive. Uh, so please consider subscribing, we definitely want to have you aboard. And if you're an existing subscriber, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get a uh, alert anytime that we put out a new video. These are time sensitive, so that they are important that you guys respond to them quickly. Alright, so taking it from here, uh, we left this off with the Terra Nova event. And the vote in the Federation Council from last week was whether or not we should use force or we should attempt to negotiate. And the voting was pretty... Uh, pretty strongly in favor of the negotiations, so the way that we're going to play this is that Starfleet has given captains, you know, the ability to use force if necessary, but have really pushed the uh, diplomacy option first. So we're going to go ahead and negotiate, so let's read this just to get it started. The captain arrives back at the shuttle with the remaining members of the away team. On the flight up to the USS Noble, the team described what they found in the communications array, while Captain Thwain analyzes a detailed scan on the life form it encountered. It's human. Captain ponders the options available to recover the security officer from the surface, and as you guys have said, we're going to attempt to negotiate. So I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, the storyline will continue here shortly, but let's take a look and set up the Federation. So, last episode, as you saw, we created the United Federation of Planets. Right now, you can see our borders have grown significantly. We were only Earth and Alpha Centauri before, now we encompass a large part of the sector. Um, we have overtures out to, I believe, the Benazites, 
and the Tellarites about potential join, t potentially joining the Federation. And I, I think that one of the other things that we talked about was getting the Zindis in here. So I'm going to offer them association status, which of course now they're not going to accept. So uh, that's unfortunate because well, we're very close here. We'll keep an eye on this. We might be able to offer them protectorate status as we continue to develop. We had the option before, but it looks like uh, something has changed and we're no longer able to do that. Let me check down here. I believe that they are actually in a... Uh, they have a non-aggression pact. I'm just looking at the different uh, different things that are going on here, yeah. So we can't really do anything with the, uh, the Betazoids yet either. How about the Temerian Unity? They're also pretty wary of us. So we're just kind of setting the uh, setting the stage. We have the Orions in the south, the Nausicans, and we have the looming menace, the uh, Romulan Star Empire, over here to the north. Now, taking a look at this, I think that they may actually be at war with the Bullions. I just want to double check. Okay, it does not look like they're at war with the Bullions at this time. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. And as far as this goes, uh, the Bullion League and the Benazites are both in a coalition with us. So that's that's exciting, and then we can hopefully make them full member states here moving forward. All right, so our minerals and our energy are a little bit on the low side. It looks like we have a lot of planets that we can take care of, so let's make sure that those ships are doing their thing. Uh, they are building mining stations, very good. This one is building a frontier outpost right here, which is perfect. Which will get our space back and all these planets. And then after that, we will have them handle that. We are also checking out this planet, uh, Terra Nova, because I thought that that would be a really great place for us to colonize. And afterwards, we'll go on to Epsilon Dondri. We have very little influence right now, and we're not getting a whole lot of unity. So let me go through and, and really check the surface and see what's going on here. Okay, so we have some optimizations that we're going to have to make, but we don't have a whole lot of minerals. So this is going to be an episode on growth. And making sure that we're playing correctly. Additionally, our fleet is over the fleet capacity, but we're going to have to see that we're growing correctly with spaceports and all other kinds of upgrades as necessary to maintain the kind of fleet that we should have. So we will definitely focus on that this episode. So let's get started. All right, I am going to move it up to fast. And here we go, Terra Nova. The captain and the medical officer head to the surface to help the injured officer. Locating the entrance to the cavern complex, they navigated to a room with humanoids and successfully convinced them of the peaceful in intentions. Having been brought to the injured crewman, the medical officer is able to effect treatment. After hours of negotiation, Captain Thuan is able to convince the Novans, as they call themselves, to trust the crew of the USS Noble. Working together, both sides are able to help build a new colony on Terra Nova, and the cause of their initial retreat to the caves and waves of death due to local radiation hazards is identified and treated using technology from the Noble developed years after the colony was established. Excellent, so what happens here? Uh, yeah, our ruler, Nathan Samuels. Oh, and look at that, we had a we had a error change as well. That's fantastic. Really nice uh, touch on the mod there, guys. Looks like we moved into, uh, into that. I, Let's just see if if that's happened with all of our ships yet. Now we're still we're still in the Enterprise era. We just looks like oh hey, this is a brand new ship model. This was uh, something that I didn't actually make it into the new, uh, into the new stuff. But this is from Star Trek Beyond. This is the uh, Franklin. This is a Franklin class ship. Very very nice model, guys. Very well detailed. I like that. Awesome. So uh, and we've gained some influence, which is good because we weren't gaining it at a very good rate. Looks like we also got a colony out of that, which is amazing. Awesome. So we walk, welcome them back into the fold. That's really nice. <laughs> Let me see if the existing science ship has changed to that model as well. I would assume that it did. Yeah, there it is. It actually... Uh, here, we'll go to the go-to again. It actually looks really cool. Yeah, so full props to the team for that. That's one of those little things that we can do that... This ship, although it comes from the Calvin timeline, totally looks like it fits this universe so that's cool anytime we can get new things in Star Wars that's or Star Trek that's a really cool thing all right so we have that set up now let me uh, let me see was it a uh, 
It's not showing up in my list here. Oh, okay. Here it is down here. Very cool. So we need to make sure that we're optimizing our people. And that works. We're up to 50 minerals. Perfect. We'll keep an eye on that. Alright, just taking a look. Our Andorans have timed out a research agreement. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot that we can do here. How are we doing on food in the Empire? Oh, we definitely need food. So we're going to build a... Uh, <laughs> and it's it's kind of fun. I bounce from uh, you know from mod to mod. So sometimes you look at this and you're kind of like, wow, this is a little different. I have to remember how to play this mod. Uh, but that's that's really neat. So we're gonna build a, a food replicator there, and then once we get this upgraded, we'll do that. So th these are Vulcans. Very neat. We have all the different races here. Who's on Terra Nova? Humans, obviously. Oh, they're Novans, and that's what they call themselves. Very cool. Uh, we will go ahead and clear these as well, so we need to set up for future colonies. In fact, we should use some of that. Oh, here we go. The, uh, the new station is in place, which is a good thing, because we're still plus one. 1. 1.7, almost two. So we gain more influence because uh, Prime Minister Nathan Samuel's mining mandate has been constructed. I think it Every term they have a certain platform that they're running on, you know, like build so many of whatever and we get rewarded. So now the Federation has grown nicely and we should hopefully connect here pretty soon. Well, that's very exciting. At least it gives us some security in this, uh, in this sector. Let's also take that construction ship and we need to get these research stations ASAP. It's going to cost me quite a bit of uh, energy. So first, let's see, is there any major energy that I can take advantage of? I see there's like two here and two here, but I don't see anything that's really big that would go a long way towards solving our energy issues right now. All right, it looks like we're going to have to solve our energy issues on the planet themselves, or on the planets themselves, maybe this one? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> so we will send that construction ship over here. And build that mining station. That'll give us plus two overall because there's one that goes into the actual station itself and then plus two carries over. That'll take us up to five. That'll be pretty good. Our science ship needs orders, so I wish we had the automatic exploration. And quite honestly, I wish it was there from the beginning of the game because it's one of those things that, that I don't like to micromanage all that much. But we're going to have him go ahead out here and survey these systems so that we know what's to our south. And we probably lost a science ship last, last playthrough. This is dilithium. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're getting those dilithium crystals as well. I think that's good, we'll continue here. We need to save up next for a, another starport so that we get back to the positive because this is actually hurting us. Um, yeah, it, maintenance cost has increased 8%, which is a problem. I mean, we're, we're right on it in terms of resources. Station complete. All right, excellent. So we completed the station. Oh, here we go. We have a colony ship. Station and where are complete. they going? Because I don't actually have the ability. I might have to give up. Uh, I might actually have to give up another system, like PGM or Talcetti to one of the uh, one of the sectors just because we already have six. All right, while in command of the first fleet, Admiral Costa has learned to carefully nurse their supplies to significantly reduce ship operating costs across the board. That's great. That actually helps a little bit because we have less that we have to spend on that. Now we're up to 385, so I want to build another um, spaceport. Now the the thing is, where should we do this? I think it's, Im it's important that Alpha Centauri has a uh, spaceport as well, but it looks like they already have one. So let's see. Maybe Mars? Yeah, since Mars is on the... Um, they have one as well. Alright, so it would have to be one of these other planets. Uh, Terra Nova is actually kind of on, a f on the frontier. But I was really thinking about something like this. Uh, oh, they're not... They're in the sector. Just because they're close to the Romulans, and I could see that being a point of contention, so having one of these star bases really helps. But to, to secure this side, I think we're going to do Terra Nova. 
just so that our borders are more secure. So we've gone ahead and, and done that. That pretty much wiped out our minerals for now. But we will have the uh, construction ship shortly, or the uh, the shipyard shortly. That'll be great. Keep an eye on this. Where where are they going? Did they uh? They have no orders. So where was I going to send them? I was probably going to send them over here. But since we already got the we got that. That's perfect. Here's a desert planet. I don't think we really need to expand anymore. We are at the point where we should really build uh, tall and not wide at this point. At least that's my theory. You guys totally are welcome to disagree with me or tell me what you think. Oh, oh, oh. We gotta stop. Oh no, once again Terra Nova has been pummeled by following asteroids and this time part of our colony has been destroyed and you must say the local, local population is not happy. Something must be done. We're going to do an asteroid defense project. That's horrible. Okay, so that building was ruined. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. Okay, so Terra Nova. What just happened? Okay, so we got another, we got another building ruined. We need to repair that. Okay, so we also have a special project here. What do we need? Oh, 42 months. It's going to cost us a lot, but it's worth it if it stabilizes it. So we'll take a look at that. Also, one thing I forgot to look at was technology. We're two months away from our tile blockers being cleared. Uh, is this the Terra Nova project? Yeah. Okay, so that's not moving, and we're two, two months away from the... Uh, new warp engine. Oh, that's cool. Alright, very neat. So we'll look at that. Also, we have an election underway for President of Earth. Yeah, for President of the Federation, actually. So these are our choices. Hmm. Looks like uh, Nathan Samuels is going to continue to win, and, and why not? I mean, we've seen that he's done very well through our cinematics in terms of being charismatic. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, interfere in this. I think that's totally fine. We'll let the democratic process play out this time. All right, we have unemployment because that building is destroyed. The Benazites and the uh, Temerians are now rivals, which is going to be a problem to try to get them into the Federation. It's unfortunate. Research complete. Let's say Black Cruiser up here. Black Cruiser. Cluster. Cluster. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, so we have some new research. We're going to take a look at that real quick. We have the new warp engine, which is great. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like we have a picture of Dr. Uh, what is his name? I want to say Lawrence. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just not there. It's at the tip of my tongue and I, I can't get it out. So we have Phaser Turret, which it looks like it is an interesting thing. It doesn't really tell me what it is. Here we go. So its average damage is 1.64. Huh. I'm not sure if the, how helpful that is. The research alternatives, though, I think is going to be a big deal. 121 months. We are really behind. We have to make sure that we play better. I know that um, Admiral Andre was telling me that I need to do a better job, and he's absolutely right. So this form coalition one, I suppose it's actually not necessary because we're already in a coalition and we already have a coalition formed. So we have a choice between the tile blockers for ice, really, and the mountains. Let me take a look and see which one is more prevalent. I don't see any mountains on these. There's one mountain there, two, three. And this is all ice fields, which I don't think they're actually tile blockers. There's a mountain there and here. Yeah, I, I think mountains are actually the way to go. So we'll do that. That's 41 months. That's a long time as well. We'll just make sure we keep uh, 
keep playing and expanding. That's all we can do. Make sure we manage our, our resources as uh, well as possible. Now having the Mayflower out without having a place for it to go actually hurts us energy-wise. I would scrap it, except that we could probably get another colony in here. Let me see, is there any other world that's absolutely worth colonizing? It's one of those things, if I can find one that really, how could we say no to it kind of situation, it's the way to go. Okay, so we've encountered new aliens as well. Well, down here, 18s. Yeah, I'm looking for something in the 20s range, in the mid-20s, because that, if I'm going to do it, it has to really have a value to us. Here we go. So this desert planet actually could be the way to go. It's a 24. It's already in an existing system. Let's see. Vulcans could actually do better, but humans can at least live there. So I think we should do that to start. I'm going to go ahead and send them over there. We call it Kitferia, because that's, uh, that's what it says. It'll get rid of that ship at the very least. And I also wanted to check out our traditions and see how we're doing. So we're working on diplomacy, it looks like. Habitability has been increased and things like that. All right, excellent. Keeping our eye on that. Continue to play through this. We have a new station complete. Here we go. Uh, tribes encountered. We've de we've detected the presence of a primitive alien civilization on Capella in the Capella system. They currently seem to be experiencing the equivalent of a renaissance, having recently left the medieval age behind them. Scientific knowledge is spreading rapidly, and armies of their petty kingdoms are equipped with crude gunpowder-based projectile weapons. Hmm. We should consider building an observation post above their world to study them more closely. I totally agree. Let's see, where is that? Interesting. Alright, so it's down here, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that because it's not a part of our space. And I really don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Alright, so we have uh, plus three. We're still plus four to energy. Okay, so we've learned of the Bajoran Republic. Diplomatic channels are now open. Excellent, on screen. First, Menis First Minister Nira and the rest of the religious council bids you greetings. We provide spiritual guidance to the Bajoran Republic and, stated, and our stated goal is to lead this great nation to a path of salvation. Do not cross this path and we may live in friendship. Huh. Our citizens greet you in peace. Awesome. So Bajor is down here and what is this? This is still... Wow, they're, they're kind of expanding a little bit more than I expected them to. Very interesting, and uh, great job here on the on the work. I think that's excellent for the mod. Okay, so they're wary, but I think over time we can do this. All right, it's time for our new Federation Council vote. Let's take a look. Uh, our choices are to review the Benazite Commonwealth Ascension process, expand diplomatic outreach, react to a galactic conflict, or set a Federation-wide research focus. I think we should review the Benazite ascension process because that would be that'd be really big i mean they have a lot of resources there that would definitely help out the federation so let's uh let's take a look at that and see what it says ascension to the united federation of planets is a long and detailed process and while basic principles were agreed early with the benazite commonwealth the minutia of the federation's legal framework trade regulations and contributions to starfleet will still require substantial investments in time and material from the federation government in order to progress Chancellor Kana is attending the council sessions and has called for further investment from Prime Minister Nathan Samuel's administration to ensure the ascension process continues smoothly. The diplomatic service has compiled, compiled a list of options available from our resource constraints to fund the process. Hmm. Okay, so this high intensity negotiations actually would hurt us in minerals, but that's not so bad. It would like wipe us out in energy credits. But if we get a new member system, I think that's that's absolutely huge. Um, I'm going to go with high-intensity negotiations. We'll see where that leads. I think that's really a great thing. All right, so we are doing this, and our colony ship is on its way. I love those warp ships. I mean, it's very different than Star Wars, where we're hyperdriving to certain, uh, certain planets. This is really cool that somebody is just, like, moving through interstellar space like that. I like it, at least. Um, review that and see. Okay, so we're gonna have to really keep an eye on our energy because we don't have a large, uh, large difference anymore, and we're okay on ship capacity. So now, 
Let's pause this for just a second. I'm going to issue some construction orders. We need to get we need to get energy and we need to get research. Research is lacking. So we will do this because this will balance out here. Because the extra one energy will be used on that station. We will do this because we need we need the engineering research considerably. And where else do we have a couple that are untapped? Okay. And then after that, I will have him come here and grab the mining station. And then we'll also grab the uh, society research as well. Now on the planets themselves, there's probably a lot of optimizations we can make. Yes, yeah, so we need to clear all of these, but unfortunately they require energy to do that. I think this is probably a good idea though. We have the ability to do this now. I want to put an energy station here because with the uh, planetary administration, it'll get a bonus. So that's just easy free energy, and then we'll go ahead and do the rest. All right, I think, think we're progressing nicely. It's just a matter at the beginning of building up and getting yourself set up for those mid-game conflicts and things like that that's going to arise. Um, I really think that they've done an excellent job with the, with the mod overall. And just the sheer number of options that we have and how the mechanics work are really cool. So we're going to continue that. Now, now one thing I really wish we had was some way for me to gauge how that's working with the Benazites. Colonization in progress. Okay, so here we are. Finally colonizing clear. this one. So that's happening. That's not going to add to this, which is cool. Now we're negative two as well, so we have to keep an eye on that. On Earth, at least, a tile blocker is cleared, so I'm going to build a power plant. And I'm probably going to move somebody from minerals. Put him there, because he's happy. Yeah, we're going to move somebody from minerals to power. Excellent. And... Let's see, how are we doing here? We're plus two, so we kind of need that. We'll also set up to build the hydroponics farm. The good news is it is coming in pretty quickly. When we play on fast, it does move in a nice little clip. Let's see, how are we doing on Mars? We can get rid of this. That costs a lot, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. Here we go. We also have some other things we can build. I kind of like, I'd prefer to wait in this instance to, to build any of these. Uh, buildings just because once this levels up then I have to go through and upgrade all of them and it costs us even more money so we'll just let that ride for now let me see how we're doing on Andoria same thing here and same thing here so looks like in order for us to get the five we're gonna have to definitely remove one of these tile blockers so that we can grow so that'll be the limiting factor there and here, same thing. I want to get five population, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, so it looks like we're in a holding pattern pretty much anywhere. The only place that we can really build is going to be on Earth. All right, so we, we've gained more influence again because we have completed those mining stations, which is great. Really helpful. We have a trade deal. Star charts and energy credits to the Andors. Yeah, we'll do that. Excellent. So, what did we pick up? You know, there's another empire over here. That's exciting and somewhat scary. All right, migrating forests. <laughs> the surface of Terra Nova is covered in lush forests with massive tree analogs rising hundreds of meters into the air. Interesting, our colonists. Interestingly, our colonists have found that nearly all the flora is mobile is mobile to various degrees. Forests stretching for miles will slowly migrate to new areas richer in nutrients in a cycle that seems to be tied to the planet's orbit. Unfortunately, this has seriously hampered our efforts to develop the colony's infrastructure. The migrating trees frequently cut power lines while smashing our buildings and roads into rubble. We need to find a solution. That I, I would love to see that. That's like straight out of Tolkien. I like it. Uh, burn migrating for forests or study them. Spatial rip. Let's take a look at this. So, twenty-three months cost five hundred. I think that's important. Terra Nova is starting to become a real issue for us in terms of all the stuff we have to deal with, but it should 
hopefully be worth it in the end. And they're very unhappy. Impoverished. Alright, we're gonna have to look at that at some point. So how are we doing on Earth? This guy's about to grow in. That's great. Excellent. And we should have more food once he does that. Empire-wise, um, this is actually part of the base game now that we can carry food over from one planet to another. So that does make a difference and it does help happiness when people are fully fed. I wonder if uh, it's because we have like a caste system. Alright, so so one of the things that I noticed was we have this uh, freedom, Citizens for Freedom Center. So what we need to do is have a ban on slavery. Uh, if we ban slavery, we'll make them even happier. There we go. By embracing the faction, we've made them 75% happy, which is now giving us more unity. And I think that's a good thing. We are negative 5 in energy credits, though. That's not something that we can sustain. So I definitely need to find a solution to that immediately. Once we get negative on energy credits, all of this will grind to a halt. Actually, we're going to cancel that. I have this here. I don't want to spend any energy credits on that since we're in the hole and I'm gonna and build that as soon as that's up. I'm gonna move uh, another person from mineral work over to energy production because we absolutely need that ASAP. And the same thing here, I'm gonna build another power plant and we'll move another miner. Yeah, so we're taking a hit to minerals but we need it because without that we'll be in the hole very quickly. Okay, our trade de uh, deal with them has fizzled out. Let's see if we can get another one going. Oh, they're really negative on that. Okay, well we're about to absorb them, it is hoped. We have too many colonized systems, so... That's weird. How, how did we lose? We used to have six. Now we have four. Unusual activity. Okay, this is weird. For several weeks now, the United Federation of Planets Security has been attempting to trace a sig series of illegal database hacks. Hmm. The intrusion seemed to have one thing in common. They all have targeted local uh, locations known to store classified historical information on the eugenics wars of the late 20th century, where genetically augmented humans nearly claimed total domination over Earth. Why someone want would want to dig up the ghosts of the past remains unknown. Okay, that is worrying. We're going to keep an eye on that situation. Hopefully nothing uh, bad happens from that. But... <laughs> That's kind of cool. Like, the stuff that they think of for these uh, are pretty exciting. Alright, we need more energy. And... Where can I get it? Here we go. Go to the Altair system. Grab one of these. Because I, I have tons and tons of minerals to spend right now. And that's great. I just need people to mine these uh, colony or to mine these things. And the other thing too is we're we're chasing happiness. So we were um, in our traditions we were looking at habitability, diplomatic expansion, things like that. I think we're going to go into harmony because that'll increase our happiness by five percent. I think it was ten percent before. I could be wrong. Maybe they adjusted it in the mod <laughs> if they thought it was too strong. But I, I'm pretty sure the base game is 10%, so that was uh, less than I expected. Okay, so our science ship is continuing to do their thing. We have a 4k raider fleet over here. Whoa! First of all, that's a pretty cool model, I, I have to say. Alright, Federation Council. Legislators from across the United Federation of Planets, from Vulcan to Andoria, have convened on Earth for the Federation cons uh, Council agenda. Let's review the ascension process. Hmm. So the only thing that we can afford, apparently, is low-intensity negotiations. And it doesn't look like that'll cost us anything. So the high intensity may not have gotten us anywhere. I don't know if it's a percentage chance or how that actually works. There you go. Augmented realities. The research station orbiting Miri has gone silent, missing several scheduled. The research station orbiting Miri has gone silent, missing several scheduled check-ins. Unknown to the public, the station is one of two across the United Nations of 
uh, Federation of Planet Space still carrying frozen embryos of genetically augmented humans. These remnants from the eugenic wars have been kept hidden for over a century, though it now appears secrecy has been undone. Send a military team to investigate. Okay, so we have a timed project now. We need to send the fleet. Should we send all the fleet or should we... Tell you what, let's uh, let's take Captain Blaga. How? Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take Captain Blaga and we're going to go out and take a look. So Andre's going to lead this mission. I think that's uh, it's in the best interest of the Federation, or is it? It's uh, Cold Stations, it's here. So we're going to take him into, into Miri. Do not have access to the system. Wait, what? Doesn't make sense. Alright, we're gonna move them there. Excellent. And then once we get there, just to make sure. Yeah, once we get there. Oh, I need an admiral. So it's uh it's time. It's long overdue, so without further ado, I hereby promote I Captain Andre Blaga to Admiral, and we appreciate your service, sir. So, thank you very much for being an active member of the community. Admiral Blaga is our first. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Admiral Blaga is our first person to be promoted to Fleet Admiral status. And he did this by... Alright, congratulations on your promotion, sir. You're the first one to be promoted to Fleet Admiral status, and you did this by surviving battles and showing a rather uh, brave streak, so we definitely appreciate your contributions, and thank you for being a part of the channel. Let's continue. Alright, so now, Second Fleet can come in here, and we have an Admiral, so we can research that project. Station. Alright, so it looks like there's a, some alien vessels there that we're going to take a look at as well. Um, this is a little worrying. See how there's a there's a hole here? That means that there's definitely an empire right there that I don't know about quite yet. And that's very close to our borders as well. We'll definitely want to keep an eye on that. Man, I have to say, this is, this is a lot of fun. Um, again, I'm not playing that well. I think, I think Captain Blaga is going to yell at me again. But it's totally justified. If we don't get that energy up, none of this is going to work. So we'll go ahead and build this over here. Another station. Our planet summary is plus five, which is good. I am going to move someone else to energy production. Let's see, who can I move? Maybe... Maybe one of our food producers? Yeah. I think we're still good. Empire-wise, we're plus two. So our growth isn't as fast as it could be, but we're, we're always chasing this because we need to build this up. Once I build that up, I'll be able to make some serious gains. Let's take a look at the other colonies and see if they're ready. Uh, that's, that's still going to cost too much for me to consider it. They're very close. They have three. We need five. Nothing I can do there. Okay. Uh... We're almost there, so they're going to take about seven years and a little bit more. And wow, this is taking forever for that to go through. Alright, we do have an unemployed population, but again, there's nothing I can really do about that right now. And this is this is really hurting, so I don't know how we, uh, how we lost our ability to have six previously. We had six sectors. Before I'll tell you what I am very 
Okay. Special project complete. Asteroid defense, ma defense system. A combination of extra sturdy construction techniques and automated defenses should keep the people of Terra Nova safe from further asteroid impacts. That is splendid. Excellent. Alright. So, over here we'll be good to go there. Uh, we still have the uh, study or barn those migrating for, uh, forests, and I think that that's probably going on now. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So that's happening there. We're researching that. I am going to give some systems back to uh, the Tapanet the system. There was a uh, vote and a recommendation for the name. I apologize. I, I forgot to grab it, but I will definitely change it for next episode. I appreciate your comment that had that. I thought it was pretty good, but I cannot remember it off the top of my head. So, let's see, uh, 40 Iridani. Or is this, is this the uh, Vulcan system? Yeah, I can't, I can't touch that. But I can give them the tall SETI system, and I think I'm going to do that, because that way I don't have to micromanage it. Excellent. So, let's go into the sectors. And make sure that they're build it, building everything that they're supposed to. They can colon... Uh, no, they can't colonize, but they can build military stations. I think that's fair. I also want them to give us 75% of their energy. I'm okay with only 50% of the minerals for now. And we are going to need some governors for that. So, uh, Governor Jazz, as you've done an excellent job on Earth, I'm promoting you to sector manager for the... for the Tapanet sector until we get a better name for that, which means that we also have an opportunity right now for Earth. So if you would like to be a governor and work your way up, we have two slots open that we'll currently fill, one for Earth and we'll put the other one on Mars or one of our other planets, and then you could potentially move up to sector governor, which is pretty cool. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to do here, yeah. I want to give them this system, which takes us to 5-4, and I also want to give them Pigeon. Alright, excellent. That's perfect. So now, with that, we're at the limit. We're actually making a good amount of everything. And with 32 energy credits, I have a lot that I can play with so that we can really get this thing moving. Excellent. So I apologize, guys. This was kind of a... Uh, this turned out to be kind of like a world-building uh, episode just because we had to uh, do that. So, so let me stop one more time. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to do. So I took 75% of their energy credits. For the Andorian, uh, Andorian sector, I want to take 75% of their minerals. That actually doesn't change a whole lot. We'll just leave it where it was. How about them? Do they have enough minerals to give me to make it worthwhile? Okay, that makes a big difference. So... That's plus 47 from 40. We'll do that. We have Our a diplomat. fear us. Perhaps they are not fools. Okay, so the Romulan Star Empire has demanded that we vassalize to them. Well, of course we're going to decline that. The, the, <laughs> the Federation will never accept a foreign ruler. Let's Our take a look at them. Oh, us. geez. Perhaps they are not fools. They are overwhelming compared to us. We need to really get these other empires in here as soon as possible. I had no idea it was that bad. That's really not a good thing at all. And the other thing I'm going to do here too, well, this is the Endurance Sector so I can't do anything with it. I'm going to give them this one. And when this comes out I'm going to give them this one too. That way the, sec the, uh, the CPU can manage that. We want to make sure that what we're doing is focused on uh, you know, an actual manageable number of systems. In this case, I can handle four. I'm fine with that. There's five here, but, you know, four sectors. All right, so our construction ship is here. We have a lot of minerals, and we have a lot of energy. So let's go ahead and close this. Wandering forces migrate. Uh, the colonial authorities on Terra Nova have reported that one of the local wandering forests has migrated to another region on the planet. Hundreds of thousands of trees have uprooted and marched in unison to this new area, trampling everything in their path. Peculiar. <laughs> that's... Yeah. That's not the word I would have used, guys. I would have been like, uh, WTF, or oh my god, or... That's crazy. Not good. 
we will definitely take a look at that. I think it's currently researching. We should have a solution for that soon. Soon, I would hope. Our time project is still going on. Is that being researched right now? Let's see. They're still warping there. Yeah, I guess I haven't haven't been moving that quickly. All right, so now we need to get this done. So we have the money and we have the time and we have the energy. So let's do this. Research stations. Excellent. Followed by mining stations. Good. And then we need that dilithium. So he's there. I don't know what he's doing. Mining stations. Mining stations. Mining stations. Excellent. I think that's pretty much all we can do right now, but that should max out our resources theoretically. I think we have this one too, but if not, I'll take a look at that. And now let's go back to Earth real quick and see now that we're gaining some serious uh, energy, we can start focusing on the other things. So I want this person to come in here and focus on food. We can get energy from the stars. We should probably have these guys focused on other things that are a little less abundant. Excellent. And now that we're making the money as well, I want to have Mars have a chance to level up. So we're going to work on that. I think that's a uh, really good project. Go ahead and continue. All right. All right, they're here. So this is exciting. We're about to have the next step of whatever this event is, the eugenics wars. How exciting. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with Star Trek, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but I believe it's been uh, it's been covered at, at least the aftermath years later in some of the recent movies and you know Star Trek II and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see all that merge in here and to know that we can alter it however we see fit. So if the uh, council decides to do something that you know maybe isn't canon with what happened in the movies, that's fine too. Okay, augmented realities. Having arrived at the research station orbiting Miri, it's quickly apparent that all is not well on the station. Several hull breaches are detected and a number of bodies float dead alongside the station. As the security team prepares to board the station, proximity alerts trigger. Vessels of an alien design swarm, their, swarm from their positions on the far side of the station, weapons engaged. Red alert, weapons online. Uh-oh. Uh, we got a new research, but... Before we do that, I may have, uh, oh no. We need to retreat. Come on, come on, retreat. I, I might have sent you to your death, uh, Admiral Blaga. Okay, excellent. We've learned that the roaming forests on Terra Nova avoid certain regions that are home to colonies of a native pseudo-insect. These insects secrete a pheromone that can use to steer the wandering trees away from population centers. Furthermore, the areas where the forest most frequently range have been closed off as nature reserves, or biologists can learn much by studying this reserve from the neighboring regions. Huh. Cool. Excellent. So we want to do that, but we have to watch this. As soon as I can get him out of there, we're going to do it. Retreat. Okay. We're going to lose that station, which is understandable. But we are going to take the fleet in here and deal with this, so... Uh, Captain Archer, please, uh, please report. Not good. Not good at all, actually. So we're sending our best and brightest. Oh, man. And I had them down here, so it's going to take them a while to respond. They're on the other side of the Federation, but they are on their way. And Captain Andre is going to be repaired. Excellent. That was uh, that was scary. We almost lost him. I, pr I almost promoted you and lost you in the same episode, which would have been absolutely terrible. So now we have the option of industrial engineering, engineering lab to uh, low profile hull, which gives us uh, a chance to evade or spatial spatial torpedo to minus uh, 50 shield damage. So it doesn't hurt as much against shields. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's let's go with Industrial Lab 2. We need science badly. Very badly. Our science is very much lacking for the number of planets we have, which is why we're suffering overall. Yeah, he's absolutely right. I have not played this well. So now we're going to clear everything. But I can afford it. Excellent. I'll do that. 
Uh, Captain Andre's ship has been repaired, which is excellent. And what's going on here? Are they not? Are they no longer there? Looks like they're just chilling. First fleet, where are you? Palsetti. I guess they uh, forgot that I ordered them to go come here. So there we go. They're moving. All right, excellent. Let me let me see what. We don't have a uh, special project anymore. Maybe once we've destroyed them, it'll change. All right, our science ship is currently uh, awaiting orders, so let's send them here. And then we're going to send them over into the unknown regions on the border of our space and kind of come out here into... I'm not really sure which quadrant this is. I want to say alpha, but you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. It might be beta. It might be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. I'm not really sure how that goes. I know this is delta and I know this is gamma, but alpha, beta, I'm not so sure. Oh, there's a star here I missed. Oh well. We'll be alright. We'll probably get that from somebody else. Here we go. So we're having a fleet battle. We're sending in the Enterprise and the uh, Mirror Enterprise. Here we go. The enemy fleet which attacked the research station has left the system. Attempts to trace their warp pattern have proven fruitless as they appear to be masking their Iron Wake with exceptional skill. Unfortunate. So I have, uh, I have failed. Oh no. So this this could mean bad things for the uh, for the coalition. Unfortunately, so we're gonna go ahead and we have two fleet capacity. Is there anything I can build? We have a lot of minerals. Here we go. Uh, the Federation Council is up again, so let's go ahead and review the Benazite Ascension process. So this is good because we got our resources in order. We're able to uh, to really. Uh, so this is good since we got our resources in order. We're able to really go for those high intensity negotiations again. So that, that's a great thing. I'm totally happy with that. Now our patrol tr uh, frigate is uh, plus four, so if I wanted another Emmet cl class for Captain Andre's fleet, or Admiral Andre's fleet, that would put us over the limit. The NX class is plus 11, so it's going to be a little bit until we can get another ship for him. I'd like to have two fleets, ideally, just because of the size of the Federation and how long you saw it took to respond. I'd like to have one on both sides of our border so that we're able to move to any point as needed. And we'll continue to, to focus on that. See, our science ship is uh, not doing what I asked it to do. Let's see if I can get this to move in the right direction. Oh, okay, it's because... I, I don't know why that happened. And I definitely want to survey that system because it's right next to us and know who that is. Alright, I think that's good enough. Research complete, finally. Those tile blockers are ready. Awesome. So onboard school would help a lot. It produces, uh... Looks like it produces some research for us in an interstellar academy. Heck yeah. I think we'll do that. Okay, forest research. We've learned a great deal by living in proximity of the wandering forest of Terra Nova. Some enterprising colonists have even built homes in the treetops of some of the larger specimens following the forest around as they migrate across the planet. Some of the foremost biologists in the United F uh, Federation of Planets have spent time studying these unique trees. Excellent, so we gained some uh, society research, which is really good. Let's see how that's going to affect us. Oh, good, we went from a ton of months to 14, which is, is better. It's only a year. We'll keep that up. Alright, so we cleared the tile blocker. Let's take a look. How's Earth doing? Got two more mountains to remove. Okay, research agreement between the Betazoids. So I guess they uh, they like us a little more, and this definitely helps us. I mean, we're helping them, but it's pretty accurate that they're going to help us as well. These research agreements are key, because you can see that it like instantly lowered some of the prices on these. Very important. That's one of the things. I, I think that once we absorb them into the Federation, we don't get those benefits anymore. But if any of the developers are watching, they can tell me whether or not that's true. That's just how I would assume it works, but... They obviously are better at this than me. So why is my science ship not doing what they're... Okay. Alright, so because there was something there, they can't go this way. 
there and there, please. Yeah, that was the other thing I think that changed in the latest vanilla version, that if your science ship encounters resistance, it will warp out and choose a different path to get to its intended target, which is really nice. Uh, I'd like to see something like that carry over to this, if possible, just because I feel that's better. Oh, this is in our borders and we haven't surveyed it. Here we go. Augmented Realities. The research station orbiting Alpha Centauri 5 has, or Alpha Centauri 4 has gone silent. An apparent repeat attack on the station on Neri. Okay, so we're going to send a military team to investigate that immediately. Now, unfortunately, Captain or Admiral Andre, I don't have the fleet necessary for you to be involved in this raid, but we are going to... Where is it? We are going to respond with force. So track it on the map. Okay, so it's in the Alpha Centauri sector. So we are going to get here ASAP. And research that project. Excellent. So now we know that at least we should have, in all likelihood, the fleet that we need to take on that threat. Okay, and we're up to plus 20... We're up to plus 3. So another one and we can get another Emma class for you. Right, and while we're doing that, we have some other things we can take care of. We were waiting on the Vulcans to remove some of those things they have plenty to expand to. Actually, the, the Vulcan system got put into this, that's right. So I don't need to worry about that anymore. Excellent. A little less micromanaging. That means on Earth I can start building infrastructure. Let's get another hydroponics farm here. We'll get some energy. Some much, much needed energy. Oh wow, so these are cool. These uh, labs are a little bit different. We also need to get a historic landmark set up, but we don't have any really great spaces for that. Yeah, because unity is important. Uh, here, I guess we'll sacrifice this for the greater good. And then here I can start to build these specific labs. They're really cool looking, if nothing else. I also want to save a spot for a Nexus station, which should open up some more opportunity. And I, I do realize that this may not be the most efficient thing to do. What is this planetary modifier? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, Alright, perfect. So I think that's going to be fine. Augmented Realities. Having arrived at the research station is quickly apparent. Not at all as well. Uh, hull breaches, bodies, red alert, weapons online. Same thing as last time. Let's take a look. We need to make sure that we are on top of this. Shields up. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Oh. That is a... Uh, it says NX class, but that definitely doesn't look Federation design. And they're uh, they're stronger than I expected, too. I hope we survive this. Uh, Captain Andre, you're needed. I'm going to send you in here. You might be the person to stem the tide of war. Because it looks like uh, we should probably retreat. The Enterprise is super, super expensive. Please tell me I didn't lose it. Okay, very good. And then Captain Andre, I need you to get out of here, too. Station complete. All right. We're going to lose the stations, but I do not want to lose you as well. So come to Seoul, and we will regroup. Okay, excellent. So we're not, we're not, I'm not doing very well here. It, it looks like I'm probably going to need to build that extra patrol frigate, even if we don't have the uh, ship class for it, just because I, I need that to be able to get out of here. Oh no, retreat, come on. Okay. Alright. Thankfully we took care of this. It looks like our allies are on their way to help us. This is good. They have a 584 fleet. We'll need that. We did lose these, but we can get them back pretty quickly. Uh, wow. That, that did not go the way I had hoped. So right now, uh, Captain Andre, we're going to 
We are going to uh, merge the fleet. Spatial rift detected. So I appreciate that. Your efforts will not be in vain. We will have another. Oh, here we go. They're fighting now. Excellent. We'll watch this. I don't know if those are Klingons or they kind of look Klingonish to me. All right, we have another Federation Council Council vote. Let's review the the Benazite Commonwealth Ascension process. Medium intensity. Yeah, this this really takes a long time. I wonder how many how many years the base is because I think we're at what like probably at least six maybe six or. So, here's trying to get them in. Alright, so it looks like the Benazites are kicking some serious tail. And they're gonna solve our crisis for us. <laughs> Which is always, uh, appreciated. That's what allies are for, right? It also shows us how vulnerable we are. Oh, very, very nice. Alright, so we're gonna pause this for a second. We have some new research. We have naval capacity plus 25. <laughs> Which I, I can't see any reason why we wouldn't get that. Uh, bunker. Planet fortification. That's cool. But this... That plus 25 is huge. That's like... Three ships. Two ships. Two ships in a frigate. Heck yeah. Let's do that. And then here we have photonic torpedoes, which... Seems like a great idea. Uh... Spaceport level three. I I don't no I don't know I don't think in this mod that, that definitely upgrades things like cruisers in the in the vanilla game that would give us cruisers, but it doesn't say anything like that. It's probably a different research. I'm gonna go with phot photonic torpedoes. Very nice. Okay, so we're gonna have the construction ship come in here and fix this. We lost two stations there. Unacceptable. Where is our construction ship now? Alright, and we lost a station over here, so we're going to uh, build that when we have the money for it. Excellent, we'll continue. And how are we doing on Earth? Looks like everything is built, now we just need people to populate it. So hopefully with all of this surplus food that we're going to have... And I'm not chasing energy as hard, so I'm going to focus now on food for growth. And we have somebody over here too. So that'll give us a nice bonus. Okay. Very good. And then I want to also focus on somebody for Unity. So when she... Oh, uh, she's going to be there. Um, maybe one more energy. Yeah, there we go. Do that. I think that's fair. They're going to... They want a monthly dilithium. What does dilithium do? It doesn't, it doesn't really say. I mean, it says that it's used to regulate the warp core, which we know. But... I mean, the energy credits are big. How many do we have? We have two dilithium. I wonder if that also plays a role in this. I'm going to decline it for now, because we don't really need it. But we'll keep an eye on that with great interest. Alright. First of all, I, I can't play the Star Trek music, unfortunately, on the channel. But it is fantastic in the background. No, we're going to decline that as well. If it's the Benazites, I would say yes, because I, I don't know if, you know, their trust or something like that has a, plays a difference or plays a role in our uh, Federation negotiations. But it looks like they like us quite a bit. Long range scan of planet complete. So we've looked at these out here. Looks like these are an, an unidentified empire. Shinarite nation. Huh. Okay. I uh, I don't really remember them. It kind of looks familiar. I'm going to offer them an association status because that uh, that definitely helps us secure allies, especially on this front over here. So they've accepted. Excellent. All right, good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like a very informal step on the on the ring uh, road to pe to peace and membership and all that, so it's it's not something that I think needed to go to a full Federation Council quite yet. Let me see if the Zindi have changed their tune to us. Uh, no, they definitely hate us. <laughs> they really dislike the Bolians. 
and you can blame them. <laughs> Just kidding. We love the Booleans. The Tellarites, on the other hand, uh, <laughs> you know. In my other playthroughs, oh no! Oh, how horrible. Governor Big Huge Jazz has died at the age of 74. May she rest in peace. I'm sorry, Jorigi, but your character has died. And that's uh, that's pretty horrible. Okay, so we are finally at the point where I can start to upgrade these stations and really make some progress on these colonies. Pretty close here. And Terra Nova, halfway. Excellent. Alright, so we need a sector, Governor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and we're over the limit again. How do we limit? Oh, I built new ships. Yeah, well, that makes sense. We're going to go ahead and merge these. And Admiral Andre will definitely have a place for you shortly. I apologize about that. Um, we're over the limit, and I need a new governor. Spatial risk so detected. let's go ahead and recruit a new governor because I, I should actually get two so I'm just gonna get these guys as placeholders and you guys are more than welcome to decide that you want one of these to be your character if you're eligible in the Federation because we need a governor on Earth because this is our most popular planet so I'm gonna put Governor Hines there and I need a governor for Mars because Mars is about to have some pretty serious uh, growth here so we'll go ahead and, and put uh, this governor here. Have the naval capacity, which is excellent. Now we can start to really grow so that the Romulan Star Empire doesn't come over here and wipe us off the map. Tile blockers, leader capacity. Uh, I think we should go for leader capacity, just because we're going to get to the point with all these planets. I would like to ideally have governors in place for all sectors and for all major planets. It gives us a pretty big population or a pretty big boost. Excellent uh, construction. Our science ship is over here. It's still just chilling. So let's survey these systems and see what we can find. Like I said, I don't really necessarily want to build any wider at this point because I think that that has hurt us at the beginning, trying to expand as much territory as we could. Kind of set us back on the research process, and now I'm trying to cl uh, claw that back on Earth. And you can see that I'm trying to upgrade these things. But now it's just a matter of fighting the population growth. Okay, the Denobulans no, want the Dilithium, we're going to decline that. I wonder how this process is going. I wonder if it takes 10 years. Um, maybe it's better to have some mystery involved in it than to absolutely know. So that's up to you. I'm sure some of you guys are well versed in this mod and you already know. Okay, there's another one we can do. Come down here and get that research, because I definitely need physics research. That's a, our biggest area of opportunity. In the mining station, we're receiving a transmission from the Shelliac, or Shellac Corporate. They appear to have su successfully translated our language. Where are they? Aha! Attention, alien creatures. Unfortunately, I was chosen by Director Sheldon to represent the Shellac Corporation in all diplomatic dealings with your primitive civilization. We intend to unlock technologies your feeble minds cannot comprehend. Do not interfere. We could learn much from each other. Okay. They're equivalent. Our technology is superior. And they don't really like us. Legate Dal Ket and the ruling council of the Cardassian Union have instructed me to bring you this warning. Keep your ridiculous looking alien ships away from our space and know that our military respond to any transgressions with maximum force. We're delighted to meet you. Hey there, Romulans. Alright, so we caught up to them. We're doing better. <laughs> Yet again, let's uh, let's take a look. Let's review the ascension process. I think the medium uh, negotiations are the way to go. Alright. Hopefully at some point we get them here. That would be really important to me. Alright, so they're closing their borders to us. They're over here, which is kind of where we expect them to be. Bajor and Cardassia right next to each other. Hmm. Looks like I lost a station. 
Uh, okay, our, our border pulled back for some reason. I don't know why, but we definitely have the ability to expand that. Okay, let's let's see. I, I can put some more outposts out here. It might be worth it. Just to see if we can shore up some of our potential issues. Let's see, are there any planet Here, like this planet, this primal world, as a 22 is actually a pretty good co uh, colony potential. I'm going to have our construction ship come out here and build a research station. We have plus five to the good and the influence, so I want to make sure that we're not getting shut down anywhere. I'm also going to have them build one right here, because that'll connect to this and hopefully extend our reach out to Bajor, which I think would be an excellent move. So we'll go ahead and do this. Okay, so we've spent the influence to do that. It was not that expensive. And we'll let this go. We have unemployed populations. Here we go. So now we can start upgrading stuff because, as you saw before, when we do it the other way, it doesn't work as well, in my opinion. Alright, so we're... Okay, so they want to migrate with us. Uh, they're peaceful. Xenoph Xenophiles. Yeah, we agree. They're great. Uh, they want to trade practically nothing for our monthly dilithium. No thanks. Alright, so what are we doing here? So, I need to build something here. Let's put up a... Uh... Oh! Oh, okay, so this is what dilithium is used for. If I build a refinery here, which actually makes a lot of sense, we'll get even more naval capacity. So this is why we're not going to trade that. Now now it makes sense to me. Okay. And here, we need some energy. Here we need some ecological preserve. I don't. Can we do more than one? It's probably planetary unique, right? Research complete. Yeah, planetary unit. So we'll just keep an eye on that. But that's pretty cool. Oh no, we've lost it. We've lost a leader. It looks like uh, scientist Ven Zen Yang has uh, passed away. That's most unfortunate. Let's see who do we have to potentially replace them. Okay, remember guys, these positions are open, so we would potentially be named in all of them. And we just what did we get in the research? We just got the photonic torpedo. Very important. Defense satellites or mineral silo. Storage bay. Huh. I think that we should go with defense satellites. Yeah. Defense satellites could help us secure some of these border worlds. I like that. That way, if, if it takes us a while to react to it, we should still be okay. Um, there was one other thing I just thought of. I want to make sure that my planets and sectors down here in the sector has the same settings. So, that's good. They can build military set, uh, stations. I'll do the same here. And I would like them to respect the tile resources where possible. Alright, excellent. Maybe... Alright. Take a look at that for next time. I'm doing an extra long playthrough today. We'll, we're gonna take a look at it and see how it goes. Because I know we didn't have one last week because of the special anniversary video. And... I wanted to reward you guys with this. Hopefully it's not too boring. Uh, sometimes in, in Stellaris there is a bit of a lag between um, awesome things happening. There we go. So we have another trade deal. Where in the heck are these guys? I don't remember them at all. Oh, I accidentally agreed. Well, <laughs> well that was most unfortunate. <laughs> we'll have to come up with like a bureaucratic way to uh, explain that in the next cinematic. So, uh, you know, a, a local legislator unfortunately rubber-stamped a bill without reading it, and now we've lost dilithium. The Federation is not pleased. Something like that, I definitely think that that's, that's helpful. Alright, so we'll end up getting this. It looks like they're building those right now. Our science ship is out here again. Uh, I just can't give it enough orders, it would seem. I send them somewhere, and we saw a comet. So, here's the deal. We're a multi-world species and somehow seeing a comet makes everybody happy even though we see lots of comets it doesn't make sense to me all right 
Let's see how we can do this. Nausicans are their rivals, so it doesn't look like we're going to get them into the Federation anytime soon. Unfortunate, and they're hostile towards us as well. Oh, awesome. So we get a research agreement from the Andorians, which we agree to. In fact, let's double check with the Vulcans to see if there's anything that we can do. Star charts, maybe. Uh, give you some minerals, please. We love you. Yeah, they, they always drive a hard bargain for them. It's uh, it's 27 this time or nothing. I just want your star charts. All right, excellent. Okay, so now we got all of this. You can see that the bottom got filled in very nicely. The Vulcans have been super active in their surveying efforts, which is really helpful for us to know what's up with our enemies. I like it. All right, so we have a new campaign. All right, so uh, it looks like there's an election. Interesting. We're going to pause this and take a look at it. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new vote for this week. There are many candidates. I will go ahead and list them in the uh, comments section. And what we will do is you guys will vote on the ruler of the Federation. Now, keep in mind that anyone that gets promoted into that role, I won't be able to change their name. So if there was a position that you wanted, and a particular scientist, you have to tell me which one you were looking at, like engineering, society, uh, you know, a governorship position, etc. It looks like everybody has about the same in terms of a uh, chance to win, and it's only going to cost me at most if I were to promote, like, Admiral Costa or... Nathan Samuels or somebody like that to the role it wouldn't cost me that much so we can we can definitely afford it so in the comments let me know who you want to vote for and I will put up again the uh, the names of the different rulers and we'll see if we can get a consensus if I cannot get a majority vote because there's a lot of different options so we could end up with a multiple way tie we will do a runoff and where I will pick the leader so we'll have that and that will be a fair and open transparent process i'm just going down here so that you guys can see their platforms and some of the different uh things that they bring to the federation all right and mo costa uh, nathan samuels two of our governors and all of our scientists are eligible for this pretty much any of our command positions eligible so go ahead and make your voice heard this week in the comments and vote and i do appreciate you i do hope that you enjoyed this uh once again my name is captain katarn for intrepid dawn we'll see you in the verse thanks guys